Thank you, Peter. I think you cannot resist the beach. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for staying until the very end. Uh, my presentation today is about the uh, effective GNG exploration strategy inspired by a wolf pack. So the outline of my presentation, we just do a brief <coughs> review of the technology that we've been developing, the current developments and practical applications, and the work that we're doing in terms of uh, breaking cognitive barriers in exploration, <coughs> primarily uh, using techniques such as knowledge network and native language understanding. And finally, the conclusions. Okay, so last year we have, uh, we have had the privilege. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Um, so last year we had the privilege, our, our colleague team, we had a privilege to present the work that we've been doing on, on Elastic Docs, which is basically an intuitive container for unstructured data which covers uh, the four pillars, which are the optical character recognition, natural language processing, application of uh, deep learning for auto-image classification, as well as uh, geolocation and, uh, and uh, elastic search. And I think, uh, um, well, th this is just a, a very, very quick summary of, of that uh, work that, that we have presented from uh, last year. So. That covers all the search, search functionalities, uh, image uh, classification functionalities, and uh, as well as uh, auto clustering fu functionalities. Okay, so t to date, what have we been working on? We've processed more than a million pages of documents, half a million uh, images, five terabytes of data. We've gone through different uh, uh, different uh, image types, maps, tables, seismic cores, spin sections, uh, stratigraphy, and so on. We've, we've gone through 100 uh, plus of uh, document categories, around 100 years of uh, exploration history, covering seven disciplines from geology, geophysics, petrophysics, reservoir engineering, drilling, and production. And we've gone through 1,000 wells in about 20 basins. So um, I think we can, we can say that we have been addressing the, the challenges, the, the four V's of big data, which is volume, veracity, variety, and velocity. So volume, because we've gone through these huge numbers that, that you, you've just seen. Veracity, our platform allows us to be able to quality control the, the input that, that we have uh, uh, put in the, in the um, platform check for quality, check for integrity. Variety, because we've gone through um, documents uh, from uh, covering basin information to field information to uh, reservoir level, well level reservoir, and, all, and up to mi microscopic information covering frame and grain. And all these data are available at your fingertips. So. Things we have learned doing, doing this, we have seen some technology evolution, a sort of, a we call it a cyborg uh, data plus platform because we've seen that, uh, I think from the typical workflow where we feed data into a platform in this, uh, in the work that we are doing, we, we, we see that actually the, the amount of data and the, and the variety of data that we have influences very much the development of our platform. So it's a, it's a, it's a very tight uh, co relationship between data and functionalities. And with regards to application and exploration, we have seen that actually you can start exploration at your own data backyard. We've always been looking at outside data, how to enrich our database, but companies already have a lot of, uh, a lot of data within. And this is what we have been trying to extract insight from. And fin finally, the third one is that when we go for new ventures, we assume that new ventures are uh, data deprived, not a lot of data. Again, uh, you, uh, new ventures can be data driven, leveraging on already uh, existing data sets within the, the company. So from what we've seen, this platform allows for, uh, has quite a, a b benefits in terms of building knowledge in terms of managing opportunities for exploration, risking, selecting uh, portfolios, and uh, 
obviously knowledge sharing within the uh, within the company itself, and hopefully, as we all well, we all hope, lead to to new discoveries. Um, we've seen that it um, having a, this platform allows us to understand quite easily and have access to the <coughs> information with regards to risk associated to. Uh, well, elements of exploration, seal and migration, quality of the reservoir, probability of success, and also using the extracted parameters as input to further, uh, further technical work with regards to petrophysics, uh, geophysics. And because this data is available to, uh, to anyone that you may want to, to provide to your or, uh, organization, this basically you can open the conversation among uh, different disciplines. Um, so basically we have seen that, okay, now we have access to big data. What, what, what do we do with it? Um, the, the biggest problem that we actually have seen when, you, when, when you're dealing with, with this kind of uh, volume is not so much, it's not anymore the access, it's more the ability to understand the content that you have and how to understand which information is relevant, which information is useful to the work that you are doing. So it's really about the cognitive ability for to to uh, to digest uh, information criticality, and uh, on the other side, uh, native na native language. And I'm, I'm going to talk about this uh, these two concepts. So. Um, in terms of in terms of understanding of uh, criticality of information, we have been working on how to how to get or how, within a large corpus of document how to how to determine which information has priority. So we have been um, so we have been working on this uh, visualization uh, of uh, knowledge networks to understand. Um, to, de to define relationship between our, uh, among data. The example that I'm, I'm showing ri right now is actually our representation. Or, uh, a node in this network represents a uh, well, and the network thickness within, within this uh, image represents the relationship uh, from one well to the other. And the way we interpret it and that was that is related actually to the title of the presentation, is the um, rela rela we related to the analogy of a wolf pack. So when we look at knowledge, we see that you, you can have in a wolf pack basically you have an alpha an alpha wolf which is basically the leader or in this case we assume as the leader of information. We have the pack which is essentially a group of wells with similar <coughs> with. Uh, showing similar information and more or less uh, uh, clustered together. We also have scouts, which are wells that give information, let's say, uh, crossing from one geological area to another geological area. So this kind of tran uh, creates transverse relationships to different uh, wells. And finally, we have what we call the soul spirits or the, or the lone wolf, which is in terms of information, this is information that is rarely used for, for whatever reason that, that uh, we will see a little bit in, in this image, right? So this is to, to, to explain a little bit on, on these relationships that I've been talking about. So you can see clustering um, if we, we, you can interpret these uh, clusterings of, uh, let's say, different wells, you can assume that each cluster is related to a specific uh, basin, for example, and you can see the relationship, interrelationships between <coughs> basins. You can also see within uh, the, sa the same cluster, if you look more closely, you could be establishing relationships between your um, successful wells or uh, dry wells because in terms of knowledge network obviously when when you work or we, when we work we always like to get the successful wells as an analog so usually all the fur the the further um, wells that we drill is related to ha to that successful well but uh, and so many things are connected to this whereas the less successful eventually they're more on the 
periphery. And again, on the isolate, you can also have uh, isolation of information, and this could be related to either failures, to vintages. It's just old, really, really old information that no no one uh, wants to to look back anymore, to to see because it's too old. But could be worth for for the for the company to to look at. And um, so. In, in this image, we're looking at the, the vari di differences in terms of uh, richness of information. You can see where you have a, a very thick linkages. These are areas with a lot of information. You have thin, thin linkages, which obviously shows the paucity in, in information. And what, what can we do? What can we do about this kind of uh, networks? Uh, I guess the first thing that people do is obviously add more data so you can create more links the other thing you could be doing is uh, uh, do the our own understanding look a little bit more in the data that we have feed more information into the network so that we actually create new links from existing uh, data and from an exploration point of view in terms of ideas generation this could be opportunities for uh, low-hanging fruits And when we show this, um, all these net networks and, and uh, highways or information highways, people always ask, uh, do you know what, okay, so you, you created the relationships, but do you know what they're talking about? So um, our platform allows us to uh, be able to identify this information, th these links am among the wells, and it could be for example, related to a shared reservoir, like you, you could extract the, the um, related information, in this case, uh, defining a, a certain level, stratigraphic level shared by a, a, a specific well, or it could, it could be talking about shared logistics, could be talking about shared rigs, could be talking about ports, pipelines, and so on. It could also be talking about shared neighbors, which I think is something that we, we, we really expect in this kind of network because uh, you always try to say that, oh, I use this offset well to do this curtain section and, and so on. And it could also be a shared uh, gross uh, de depositional environment. So we have looked at certain areas where you have wells that, extreme, that are extremely uh, far apart, but because of uh, shared uh, GDE, you could essentially establish this, this kind of relationship. Okay, four minutes. And um, the other thing that we, we try to work on is uh, um, an area which I think people, uh, is not that important, it's kind of a minor importance uh, depending on the area that, that people are, are working on, but when we talk about exploration, many companies do go to uh, other countries with a, no, a different native language. And so obviously, we're, well, I think we, ha we have a lot of, I mean, <coughs> uh, very expert geoscientists, but then, you know, suddenly you have to learn a new language that, that, that becomes a, a kind of a, an issue at, at some point. So we have uh, implemented uh, an auto machine translate uh, feature that allows to that allows to help uh, break down a language barrier uh, during exploration so in this little uh, video here is we have we have used a uh, semi synthetic uh, <coughs> data just to basically uh, demonstrate our point where the idea is that uh, you have a you have a you have a, a report in a in a language in a uh, let's say in a language other than english for example uh, spanish you could search through in a language that you know in English goes to tr it goes through the contents in 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 foreign language and and f and comes back with the an the answers to your query in the language that that you are familiar with. So um, we find this quite a, a neat feature because of course you can you can uh, do I think everyone can do a kind of a copy and paste and ca kind of translate. Uh, this, uh, these documents, but what uh, we have implemented is to allow for a batch uh, translate and enterprise level uh, uh, tra translate, and also uh, tie the query and translate feature together so that 
uh, you don't have to go to one by one for each of the documents, but you can actually do the, your analysis uh, all, all at once. And uh, dealing with the, with the challenge in terms of variety, I think variety was the third D. Um, we, have, uh, we, have, we, have dealt with, we have dealt with a lot of different formats of, of documents, uh, PDF, Excel, Word, uh, GIS, LAS, uh, um, SEGWI, and uh, essentially the whole, the whole uh, idea is that all these uh, var um, multi-format format data are actually tied together to have a better understanding of, of, of the, the contents. Okay, to conclude, so w what we have been working on was uh, we, 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 were, we started to move a little bit from solving analytical, uh, analytical problems in, in, um, in dealing with uh, high volume unstructured data to improving human cognitive abilities. How are we able to actually understand the data that we, are, we, are, we have access to? And so we, have, uh, we are moving a little bit from machine learning experimentation to uh, focused exploration problem solving. How do we use this platform to, do, to solve the problem that, that we have uh, in exploration? And finally, uh, we really see an evolving approach to data between data and relationships and software platforms. Thank you very much.